Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, and in this video I would like to show you how to cut sheet metal. Now, I'm going to be focusing more on the different tools you can use to cut sheet metal, not exactly on how to cut it correctly by the book. So with that being said, let's just jump right in. The most common tool to cut sheet metal is the snips. The pair right here that I'm holding, this is the 90 degree pair of snips, or tin snips, aviation snips, different names for them. The purpose of this guy is mostly to cut ductwork that's already installed. So for example, if you're installing a humidifier on a return duct and you need to cut out a circle, these are really nice. So you take a multi-bit, drill a hole, and then you can just stick them in there and start cutting out your hole with these 90 degree offset tin snips. They work very nice for those kind of situations. And the offset jaws, they're usually bigger. So if you look at this jaw compared to this jaw, see how the offset jaw is a lot bigger? And when I'm cutting, I can angle these this way so I can totally see what I'm cutting and all the sheet metal is coming out this way. And I don't have the green snips, you know, they're called left-handed and right-handed snips, but actually they're all meant for the right hand. The only difference between the different colored snips is that the jaw is positioned differently. So on all the red-handled snips, this left jaw is going to be on the bottom, but on the green one, the left jaw is on the top. And wherever that jaw is, that's where the sheet metal goes. So as I'm cutting sheet metal, the piece that I'm cutting off, it'll go on this jaw and it'll go upwards. And let's just see an example of that real quick. I got a piece of sheet metal right here. I'll just cut off a little piece. See how it's curling up upwards? Just like that. The green handled snips, they would be angling that thing downwards. And one more thing I want to point out is that while you're cutting it, you don't want to release the handle all the way like that, see? Because when you do that, the sheet metal that you cut off, it'll be a little bit more wavy and there's more chances to get like a jagged edge. So see that? See how it's like all rippled? That's when you let go of the handles all the way. So when you're cutting, you actually want to only release them halfway and keep pushing them forward. So little nibbles, I guess. See, that's a lot straighter and there's no ripples on this one. And let's try the 90 degree offset snips. This one, I had to hold them straight to cut it. The offset snips, I hold them at an angle like this. And they work very well to cut out circles. So for example, let's, let's cut that off. Let's say I want to cut me a piece off that looks something like this. By the way, as for the colors, red is good to go counterclockwise and green is good to go clockwise. I don't have the green one, so I can't show you an example of that, but I will show you an example of this one. So when it's offset like this, I can actually see the line and where I'm cutting. And they're a lot easier to turn. Nice clean cut. Also, tin snips are actually only meant to cut up to a quarter inch of sheet metal. So they're like finishing snips. They're not meant to cut through the middle of some sheet metal, you know? So there's four inches on one side and four on the other or however much it is. So if you're cutting off a bigger piece, everything is gonna start getting bent and wavy. So let's say I need to cut off this piece right here. If I start cutting it right through the middle, right when I get like halfway, I start to struggle because it's a big piece of sheet metal that's trying to push up. So as this is pushing up, this side is pushing down and I start getting these jagged edges and it starts to ripple. So the better way to do this is to just cut a chunk off
and you can be as sloppy as you want. And then cut the little piece off neatly. That way you're only getting that quarter inch instead of that big, big chunk. And then you can continue on nice and steady, making a good clean cut. And by the way, right here would have been a good time to use that green handled snips that I don't have, unfortunately. I mean, this time it turned out okay, but usually this side gets pressed down. And if you're trying to keep this side, then having this deformed like that, you know, in some cases that might be okay, but in other cases you do want it to be straight. That's why it does help to have both pairs, the green and the red. And one last thing about the snips. There are some old tools out there that don't have the spring in them. See how when I press this, it just springs back? That is the type of snips that you wanna have. There are some snips out there that don't spring back. And it's really annoying trying to cut a piece of sheet metal with those kind of snips. Cause every time you have to release the handle, go again, release, go again, it gets really tiresome. Also, if you have a cheap pair of snips, sometimes they can pinch the sheet metal. They kind of go sideways instead of actually cutting it. In that case, try to angle in the opposite direction and that should solve that problem. And talking about that spring back action, I have a pair of scissors here to cut sheet metal and they do not spring back. In fact, I wanna return these because they're, they're really stiff. Like even when I'm not cutting anything, it's hard to chomp down with them. Or maybe I just need to work out more. But usually scissors, especially if you have the longer blades, it's nice to have because you can do nice long cuts with them. So let's try to cut a piece off here. And see, this is what I'm saying. Like I have to apply pressure to release the grip every time because it's not spring assisted. And that makes it that much harder. So I have to apply pressure as I'm cutting and I have to release it every time. Sometimes it gets so tough that it's almost easier to just use both hands with the scissors. I don't use scissors too often, so I mean, maybe I'm just using them wrong. Yeah, scissors are not my favorite to use, but they do make nice clean cuts. But if you're cutting off big pieces, I really prefer to just use power tools. For curvy cuts, I use a nibbler. I have an attachment for my drill. And for big straight cuts, I use a grinder. Out of those two, the grinder, of course, is the beast. It really gets the job done. So let's just quick example of the grinder. Cut out a little square, let's say like this. And needless to say, when using a grinder, do be cautious. Sometimes it can kick back. As I was cutting that first piece, it did kick back a little bit. So you have to watch out for that. And also, if possible, wear some kind of eyeglasses or some kind of eye protection from the sparks that are flying out. I really should be wearing some gloves. I did not bring some out with me, but sheet metal can cut you real quick. So when you're cutting a lot of sheet metal, I would definitely recommend wearing some gloves. You know, do as I say, not what I do. <laughs> I love using the grinder though, so let's go ahead and cut off another piece. Let's make it a little bigger this time. Grinders are just, just awesome to use. I think it's so much easier than using a pair of snips. So let's cut this piece off right here. And of course, it's a nice, really clean cut. Although it does have some jagged ends towards the inside. So do keep that in mind when you're using a grinder. They come off pretty easy, but depending on what you're using the hole for, you know, you might need it really clean. In that case, you might be better off using a pair of snips. And last but not least, we have the nibbler. This thing is really awesome and it can really do some curvy, small cuts and there's no sparks flying all over the place, unlike the grinder. 
So this thing is actually, it might even be better than the grinder. Who knows? Let me know what you think. This guy, it literally nibbles little piece of sheet metal off as it goes forward. So like right there, you see that? So I'm gonna stick the sheet metal in here and it just like nibbles at it. Works very nicely. So let's do an example of, let's cut out a circle. like that big with the nibbler. So of course you have to get the hole started first. I'm gonna use a multi-bit. Okay, let's start the nibbling. And that was terrible. I was way off. Well, let's try to, uh, this edge was kind of an uncomfortable position for me, but let me try to nibble off this side. Okay, that's a little better. Minus this part right here. And also, I'm not using the best drill for this. This drill has low RPMs. I, that might be a good thing too. That way, you know, slow and steady, you see where you're going. Whereas a fast drill, it'll just kind of go all over the place. And that was the Nibbler. I didn't have this one for too long, so I didn't have a chance to practice with it too much, but it is a really neat little thing. I mean, I don't even know. Do you think it'll be easier to just use a pair of snips for that? Or would it be better to just use one of these? If you're a tenor, what do you think? But anyway, those are all the methods that I wanted to share with you. Hopefully you learned something new from this and you saw something interesting. Let me know what you thought about this in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and I'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, let me share an experience with you that I had recently. My wife and I, on a date, we went to Waimea, to our ranch, and we rode on horses for two hours in the mountain valleys. That was amazing. So the reason I'm telling you this is if you're ever in Big Island, Hawaii, I would highly recommend stopping by there. That horse ride is amazing. The horse I had was named Buddy and he was really energetic. So if you want to go a little faster, make sure that you choose Buddy.